Welcome back to Well, That's Interesting, the Way Too Many Mouths edition. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> I don't even know how to uh, unpack that. Yeah. What? We're going to be uh, unpacking quite a lot today. So Of mouths? <laughs> oh, yes. What the fuck? A lot of mouths. Today, in between 041, lobster diver swallowed by humpback whale and deep sea creature with eight mouths. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> what? Yeah. No idea. No idea. Well, I'm Jill Chacha, and I am with the bewildered Marissa Riley. Yes, that is me. <laughs> eight mouths? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Could that's... you not get it done with one? <laughs> no. Apparently not. I think one is honestly too many sometimes, <laughs> let alone eight. So, um, if this is your first time with us, <laughs> speaking of one, uh, welcome to the flock. Uh, Dr. Riley here comes in cold, as you can tell. I and do. She learns everything in real time, just like you. So, sometimes it's disturbing. Most of the time, it's disturbing. All of the time, it's disturbing. Um, no, I'm kidding. Most of the time, all of the time, it's fun. But uh, today it is a little disturbing because I didn't even know it was possible to have more than one mouth. Yeah. I've never even thought about that. It's been discovered. We're, we're going to get into it. That's, uh, that's going to be our second story. I'm scared I'm going to like it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, should we begin with first the lobster diver who was swallowed by a humpback? We shall. Okay, great. So... Our first story, we have to head on back just a few days ago, actually. Wow. To June 11th. Ooh. And it's a beautiful Friday morning in beautiful Provincetown, Massachusetts. Ah, P-Town, as That's they right. call it. That's right. Uh, for our even more gorgeous listeners abroad, if you're not familiar to, as to where P-Town is located, picture New York City. Okay. Now you're going to make a straight line up the Northeast coastline, past Connecticut, past Rhode Island, and there it is at the very tail end of Massachusetts, the super charming seaside town of Provincetown. Yeah. And it's actually where the Mayflower landed way fucking back in 1620, bringing hyper-religious pilgrims. <laughs> so. Well, isn't it like um, where all the lesbians go to hang out? Yes, and stuff like ex exactly. And gay people and yeah. queer people and all that. Yeah, thankfully today uh, the town is as it should be, a mecca for the LGBTQIA+, and flamboyantly gay. Uh, it's also rich with artists, restaurants, and salty locals who don't want to be bothered. Oh my god, I never even thought of the locals. Sorry, <laughs> salty locals. Oh my god, you have to see so many <laughs> so much topless skin. women yeah. that you didn't ask for. It's, jeez. Yeah. In case you don't know, when uh, too many lesbians get together, they get topless. <laughs> So. And it's often in an intrusive way. So <laughs> it sounds wonderful, topless lesbians, but it, it can be exhausting. It can be overwhelming. Yeah. <laughs> now, on June 11th, right at dawn, while the sky was still a wee bit dark, two of those locals set out for some good old-fashioned lobster diving. Oh, la la. Now, two diver, t sorry, two locals and lifelong licensed commercial divers, Michael Packard and Josiah Mayo. Mm. Okay, why this early and why this time of the year? Well, I gave it a quick search, and it turns out there's a small window of opportunity to catch the best lobster. Oh. Uh, they're mostly nocturnal, and along the northeast coastline, they're most active from June to late December. Okay, so okay, good that's to know. Here. Yeah. So, back on the boat. Picture it. According to CapeCodTimes.com, uh. <laughs> we're on the vessel Jan J, and we're actually surrounded by other ships looking for their own haul, mostly striped bass, blah, blah, blah. Got it. Everyone's fishing. Yeah. The water is around 60 degrees Fahrenheit. The visibility is around 20 feet deep, and put a pin in that. Okay. Okay. Now, the guys have been out there for some time, and for them, their haul was disappointing. Unfortunately, time is passing and 8 a.m. is approaching fast. With every beam of light, a lobster goes hiding in its den and it's too difficult to see and no. catch. No! <laughs> so, so, Michael Packard, 56 years old, he's like, fuck it, I'm going down one last time to see what I can come up with. There you go. Okay, so he checks all of his breathing equipment, it looks good. He plops off the side of the boat, back into the water, swimming 10 feet deep. 20, 30, 
all the way past visibility to around 45 feet. I'm stressed. Yes. <laughs> so, so, Dr. Marissa, would you be so kind as to tell us what Mike told Cape Cod News about what happened next? Oh, absolutely. All right, quote, all of a sudden, I felt a huge shove, and the next thing I knew, I, it was completely black. Uh, Packard recalled, Friday afternoon, following his release from Cape Cod Hospital in Hyannis. End quote. There you go. Okay, so he yeah. was um, shoved, and then he blacked <laughs> out. Exactly. That sounds um, familiar. Okay. <laughs> now... Ten feet from the sea floor, Mike thought for a moment he may have spooked a shark looking for its own meal and attacked him, Uh, and the darkness was his losing consciousness. Okay. But something was off. Well, a lot was off. Mike didn't feel any sharp pains and was still mobile. He was able to move his arms, no problem, but when he stretched out into the darkness, he didn't feel any teeth, and nothing was chomping down on him. He wasn't a meal. Dr. Marissa, would you... Play the part of Mike and tell us what he realized uh, when he was interviewed by local station WBZ-TV. Absolutely. All right, quote, and then I realized, oh my God, I'm in a whale's mouth. (laughs) I'm in a whale's mouth and he's trying to swallow me. (laughs) I was completely inside. It was completely black, Packard said. I thought to myself, there's no way... I'm getting out of here. I'm done. I'm dead. All I could think of was my boys. They're 12 and 15 years old. End quote. Uh I mean... (laughs) I know. He was swallowed. He was swallowed by a fucking whale. And I can only imagine that dread, especially when the whale began to contract the muscles in its mouth. No! <laughs> it's kind of like mushing him around. You know when you're like tasting something and you use your mouth to give it a good feel, like you're trying to figure out what's going on in there? Yes. Yeah, that's exactly what the whale began to do. Oh my God, except it's a live person. That's right. Uh, it knew something was in its mouth and it was trying to figure out if it was food or not. And no, it must have determined Mike's body wasn't food. And that's when Mike sensed the whale swim from the sea floor up to the surface. And here's where Mike's buddy, Josiah, was waiting helplessly on the boat. Oh, my God. <laughs> Did the whale give him a little ride? Yes. What? Yes. Yeah. He was like, you know, I'm not going to eat this, <laughs> but it does feel like something that is not in the ocean. That's so right. I'm just going <laughs> to give it a little ride to the top. That's right. Sorry, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Accident. <laughs> My, <Hey>. bad. <laughs> My bad. My <laughs> bad. So Josiah's waiting helplessly on the boat. Um, he was able to keep track of Mike's location thanks to the commotion of air bubbles rising up. Um, okay. And what happened next was right out of a goddamn cartoon. Oh, my God. Quoting NPR.org, after about a minute, the whale rose to the water's surface and began shaking its head from side to side. Oh, my God. I just got thrown in the air and landed in the water, Packard recalled, and I was free, and I just floated there. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe I got out of that, <laughs> end quote. <laughs> I, I mean, what I pictured is really funny. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I, I'm not going to recall it for our listeners, because I want you to keep sacred whatever you pictured, but... Yeah. It was great. It's pretty great. So, my friends, the whale spit him out, and a rejected Mike was left bewildered and floating. Now, remember how I said there were other fishing vessels in the area? Yes. Okay, well, one of them was owned by Joe Francis, a charter boat captain, and he happened to witness the whole scene. Oh, my God. And, and jumped into action with Josiah. Uh, Dr. Marissa, would you please tell us his point of view, because I think we need more visuals. Yep, yep, we do. <laughs> All right, quote... I saw Mike come flying out of the water, feet first with his flippers on, and land back in the water. Uh, Joe Francis of WBZ uh, told uh, WBZ TV, uh, <laughs> "I jumped aboard the the Jan J. We got him up, uh, got his tank off, got him on the deck." And calmed him down. And he goes, Joe, I was in the mouth of a whale. End quote. <laughs> I spit all over Jill yes, while I was saying did. this because I was so 
Excited. So excited. <laughs> Joe's in the mouth of a whale man. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, God, he sure was. Um, <laughs> all three men sped back to to the uh, Provincetown Pier, where the fire department took Mike to Cape Cod Hospital in Hyannis. Believe it or not, there were no broken bones, just some soft tissue damage, a dislocated knee that left Mike with a limp, and some bruising. Uh, He was able to walk out of the hospital that afternoon. Holy shit. Yeah, but before he was released, they took a photo of him. And Dr. Marissa, would you love to see a beaming Mike Packard? I'm glad you used the word love, because I would (laughs) love to see it. Um, so this is him. Please describe the photo. And of course, all photos will be on our social media. So please play along with us. Uh, considering the story that we just uh, recalled, this is the best case photo you could possibly <laughs> yeah. see. It's a guy. Uh, it, it's it's our guy. He's in a Mike Packard. He's in a hospital bed. He's got all this shit hooked up to him. And uh, he is giving us the biggest thumbs up <laughs> I've ever seen with a smile. Yeah. I'm not normally a fan of the thumbs up, but this is <laughs> the perfect timing. That being said, I thumbs up people 80 times a day. And That's, I'm, I'm embarrassed. I, I had no idea you're anti thumbs up. I it, It's a <laughs> self-hatred thing. Anyways. <laughs> okay. We'll, uh, we'll unpack that later. Yes, yes. Sounds okay. good. So I'm sure you're left with a few questions like what species of whale was it and why the fuck wasn't he swallowed? Yeah. Well, turns out Mike is unlucky enough to be swallowed by a whale, which is basically unheard of. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so, but lucky enough to find himself in the mouth of a we- uh, in the mouth of a humpback. Okay. And that was the difference. So let's get into why. Uh, first, let's point out researchers are ninety nine point nine 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 percent certain this was a fucking accident on behalf of the humpback. Yes, yes. And, yeah, and we know this due to the same reasons Mike was lucky. Um, you see, humpbacks are baleen whales, mm. and although they're fucking massive, 60 feet long and 40 tons, their diet is only tiny sea creatures like small fish, krill, and plankton. Yeah, they prefer, like, a big thing of popcorn as opposed to, like, a steak. Like, it's- they... And they have those cool... Um, yeah. The mouth things, I'm sure you're yes. going to talk about it, that filter out. Okay. That's exactly right. Okay. Yeah, we're totally going to get to cool that. Cool mouth things. <laughs> That's right. They That's totally a scientific cool. term, right? <laughs> they totally have cool mouth things. Uh, so small fish, krill, popcorn, like you said. Yeah. <laughs> this means their throats evolved to fit the size of their food. So get this, humpback throats are only four to eight inches wide. Shut the fuck up. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, wow. So no person could fit through. No. Now, it's possible Mike was just in, was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Hector Guzman, a marine biologist at Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute in Panama, told Live Science that this, quote, could have been caused by him swimming too close to a bait ball. Oh. The swirling ball that sardines form when threatened on all sides by predators. Interesting. Yeah. And bait balls can form in open water as well as near the bottom. And whales start feeding bottom up in many areas. Oh, okay. End quote. Okay, yeah. okay, bottom up. Interesting. <laughs> so, Dr. Marissa, would you be so kind as to tell us what these whales do when they start to feed? And this info was provided by Ian Kerr the chief executive officer of the Massachusetts-based conservation nonprofit Ocean Alliance. Absolutely. All right. Quote, he explained to NPR, um, quote, that humpback whales are known for lunge feeding, in which they open their mouths, accelerate, and, quote, take in 10 SUVs worth of water and fish, and then everything else, end quote. Yep. Now, Mike was just in the way of a good meal, not the meal itself. Got it. And just a heads up, that's about 110,000 pounds of water in one mouth. That is insane. It's insane. I'm just trying to, like, that That means that whale is, like, bigger than our apartment. 60 feet, probably. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm just trying to compare it to something. Our apartment is, is like, small but long. So, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, tell me more. <laughs> Okay, 110,000 pounds of water in one mouth. And this is where things could have gone bad for Mike. Uh, If the well panicked, it could have expelled all that water through its uh, 300 to 400 baleen plates. So those are the cool mouth things you were talking about. Yeah. And 
That's uh, what they have instead of teeth, like you mentioned. It's their filtration system that simultaneously gets rid of water and catches little sea creatures. Uh, certainly the force of that amount of rushing water would have crushed him against the plates. Definitely, yeah. And uh, what also could have crushed him, the whale's tongue. It's oh. almost it's almost four tons. Oh my God. Used in defense, that could have squashed him, no problem. So we're dealing with a very nice whale. <laughs> That's what I think. This is a very thoughtful whale. I think so. If you think about it, this whale made an effort to come to the surface and just like throw him out there. Dude, whales are smart. Yeah. They, yes. I think it fucking, it just knew. It, it was like, this yeah. is a person. This is a goddamn person. <laughs> Fuck. They're everywhere now. <laughs> That's it's terrible. <laughs> just <laughs> trying to eat some fucking little just I sea know. things. Gentrifying the ocean. With my cool mouth things. <laughs> Gentrifying the ocean. Oh my God. Ah, <laughs> uh, my friends, this is a happy ending. But this podcast wouldn't be this podcast if we didn't discuss which whale could physically swallow you. Of course. That's right. <laughs> Dr. Marissa, would you please read excerpts from one of my favorite books, And Then You're Dead by Cody Cassidy, as to which whale and our fate once inside it. Amazing book. All right. Quote, sperm whales, on the other hand, eat larger prey like giant squid and have been known to swallow the 400 pound animals whole. So, in theory, it could swallow you. The only gas you would find in its belly is methane, not oxygen. And while it's not toxic, it is a natural asphyxiate. Most untrained humans can't hold their breath uh, much longer than 30 seconds. Once the leftover oxygen in your bloodstream was exhausted, brain cells would begin to die <laughs> immediately. There you go. <laughs> you would also have the whale's stomach muscles to contend with. Because sperm whales don't chew their food, they rely on muscles in their four stomachs to <laughs> squeeze prey down to size. So before you had a chance to be dissolved in powerful stomach acid, the, uh, the muscles of the stomach would squeeze you into something resembling chunky peanut butter. End quote. Okay, so we're going to stay away from sperm whales because I don't want to be chunky mm -hmm. peanut butter. Yeah, it's a bad look. It's a, it's a tough look. <laughs> it's a tough look. <laughs> it's a tough look, and I think that's the perfect segue to a break. Uh, and when we come back, we're going to talk about a species with eight mouths. Fuck yeah. And that's not even the most interesting thing about it. What? That's right. Stay tuned. Please do. Hello, everyone. You may recognize me as Gabby from the History of Everything podcast. And my name is Brenna, and you don't recognize me from anything yet. Together, we're two scientists who explore all of the weird little questions and conspiracies of the universe in our new podcast, Mystery of Everything. Everything has an explanation. We hope. But that is what we're here to figure out. We will dive into the science behind many popular conspiracy theories, such as vaccines causing autism, flat earth theory, and was the moon landing fake? And if so, why the heck would anyone even do that? But it's not just conspiracies. There's a lot of cool mysteries that we will attempt to use science to explain, such as near-death experiences, what made the Vikings go berserk, and can I control my co-host with MK Ultra? Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, make sure to check out the Mischief Everything podcast everywhere where you find your podcasts. We're the All Creatures Podcast. Each week, Angie and I explore and share amazing details about the many animals we share our world with. Plus, Chris and I are both PhD scientists and educators, so we do the deep dives in the scientific research and then come back and share what we learn in a fun and casual way. We also speak with other scientists, animal experts, activists, and many other conservation enthusiasts from all over the planet. So you can find the All Creatures Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Hey everyone, Jill Chacha here from Well That's Interesting, and I am absolutely thrilled to tell you about Spotify for Podcasters. I use it, I love it, and it all started by downloading the free Spotify for Podcasters app, which has all the tools you need in one place to record and edit your masterpiece of a podcast. Spotify for Podcasters also distributes your show to all major platforms. So when you hit publish, your episodes will stream not only on Spotify, but I'm talking about the Apples, the Googles, Stitcher, Good Pods, the other ones, <laughs> you get the idea. And you can monetize your podcast with no minimum listenership required. 
You could also set up monthly subscriptions and record ads just like this one. So what are you waiting for? Download Spotify for Podcasters today and start changing the world. Oh, and please, stay interesting. And we're back. We are so back. We are so back, and we're deep sea diving in the middle of nowhere. Of course we are. <laughs> of course we are, Jill. Uh, don't worry, though. It's absolutely gorgeous. Ooh. Um, we're in the very far, far, far southwest corner of the Pacific Ocean. Oh, I'm stressed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're about 124 miles from the nearest coastline. Got it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. And that coastline happens to belong to the French territory of New Caledonia. Oh. And my friends, it's an island that embodies the definition of paradise. You bet it does. Please, please do yourself a favor and Google search New Caledonia. You will feel physically ill and never want to do anything else as much as swim in the waters there. I may have been uh, in the privileged position of Googling this place yesterday. Yes. And uh, low-key planning a vacation there. <laughs> and uh, I'm very excited about this uh, vacation. Yeah, so. and uh, never coming back. So. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so. it might be the end. Or no, we would just record there. <laughs> I forgot we have phones. Yes, so. we, have, we, have t- we have the technology. Yes, we would just do it topless from the beach. That's right. <laughs> so everyone, please imagine that. Yes. So back to our story. Uh, Now, just to help orient ourselves just a little bit more and to really feel how far from civilization we are, please picture not only us topless, but Australia. (laughs) (laughs) Now, travel 2,000 miles east from Australia. Oh, my God. Now, we've landed in New Caledonia. Okay. Now, hop on a boat and travel another 124 miles further east, and we've reached our destination. Got it. So there's... Definitely no bars here. There's no no cell phone service. Yeah, it's definitely BYOB. Yeah. BYO. Oh, by bars, I meant phone bars. Oh. But I'm glad your mind went there. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. Um, Okay, so we've reached our destination. I kind of lied a little bit. We need to go down now. Oh. About 1,600 feet. Oh, no. Uh, That's right. And we're looking for a seamount called. Bank Durand. And Dr. Marissa, would you please help us and please describe what the heck a seamount is as provided by the conversation? Yes, that was actually my next question. All right, quote, seamounts are usually submerged volcanoes (laughs) that were born millions of years ago. Um, Lava oozes or belches from vents in the seafloor, continually adding layers of basalt rock To the volcano summit, like layers of icing on a cake. The volcano can eventually rise above the sea surface, forming an island volcano, such as those in Hawaii, sometimes with coral reefs circling its shoreline. But eventually, the volcano dies. The rock chills and the heavy basalt causes the seamount to sink into relatively soft ocean crust. Given enough time, the seamount will subside hundreds or even thousands of meters below sea level and gradually become covered in deep sea fauna. End quote. Um, wow. Yeah, it's a lot. Volcanoes. Yeah. Underwater. Yes. So, Holy shit. Now these guys, though, the sea, a seamount is more like a retired volcano turned mountain under the sea. Covered in my new favorite collection of words deep sea fauna yeah gorgeous gorgeous very 70s very 1970s Uh, yes (laughs) (laughs) so this mountain is covered in animal life like you said uh would you like to see a very teeny version of one of course it's adorable it's like a little neighborhood in the ocean uh what do you think here's a photo here's a very tiny one this is the loveliest thing i've ever seen it (laughs) (laughs) so it's under the water it looks like it's the sea floor and there's this little like um like a little, a little, mound? like a mound. It's yeah. a mound. It almost looks like a stool. Yeah. And, um, and it's covered with like the most beautiful sort of coral, um, floral, underwater floral things. Yeah. And they look like little underwater, like dandelions. They're so cute. Yeah. It's like dandelion meets, um, something from a Dr. Seuss book. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. 
As you read before, scientists believe these formations are goddamn ancient, probably around 100 million years old. Holy shit. Yeah. And my friends, a recent dive to Bank de Rand suggests the animals chilling on these things may be undiscovered, under, sorry, maybe undiscovered species just as old. Oh my God. Oh may my God. I, and may I introduce you to one of them, the newly discovered Ophiojura. Oh, Ophiojura. That's right. Oh. Dr. Mar- <laughs> Dr. Marissa, I would like to show you a dried out version of Ophiojura. What do you see here and what, do, what does this creature look like to you? Okay. Oh, oh my gosh. This is very cool. It looks like an octopus. Yep. Um, it's kind of got this little... A uh, circular body that has a little hole in it. It looks like a mouth. And um, coming out from all sides of it are these long tentacle things. Yeah. And uh, they're long. <laughs> and they're weird. And um, I would love to see this in action. Yeah. yeah. So let's get acquainted with this animal, shall we? Yes, now, please. Now, Ophiojura was found back in 2011 by scientists from the French Natural History Museum. And after months and years of analysis, it turns out Ophiojura was full of surprises. Ooh. Now, it's actually a kind of brittle star. Oh, like it, a sea star. That it, makes more sense than an octopus. Exactly. Yeah. It's like a distant cousin of starfish. So, everyone, it's imagination time. Okay. Picture a happy starfish. Okay. But we're going to make some changes. Instead of five happy chubby arms, it has eight. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Right. And these arms aren't happy and chubby. They're thin, long, and covered in hooks and spines. Fun! <laughs> I love me some hooks and spines. Now, uh, these eight arms meet at a round disc. That's the animal's body. Yes. Um, and this is kind of funny, but the body looks like a pizza, doesn't it? With eight slits. Okay, yes, it does. It has little sections. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. It looks like a pizza. And each slit is located under each arm. But... But these aren't eight cuts. Dr. Marissa, I'd love to show you a colorized CT scan of it. And would you please tell us what they are? Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. Get on your Instagram now, listeners. We're going to post this, right? <laughs> Absolutely. We better fucking post yes. this. This is um, one of the coolest pictures I've ever seen in my life. So it's an up-close uh, picture of um, the pizza body. Yeah. And um, imagine the space between each pizza was a mouth. That's right. With teeth. Filled with teeth. Filled with teeth. Yes. It almost looks like, if you've seen the movie, <laughs> teeth, it looks like vagina dentata. Um, <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, it's just these little, little mouths. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, they've got really sharp teeth. It's really scary. It's really scary. Um, eight mouths, one under, yeah, like under each arm is a mouth. Yeah, so imagine yeah. you had eight armpits. Uh, that's already a lot to imagine. <laughs> and each of those armpits was a, <laughs> a mouth. Did I make this worse? <laughs> no, it's, uh, you improved it. What a miracle this thing is. Yeah. What a miracle. I love this thing. <laughs> So, Ophiojura is literally in a class of its own. Uh, it has its own species, genus, and officially it's a new family of brittle star. Oh, wow. Because, get this, drum roll please, this creature barely changed over 180 million years. Why mess with perfection? That's right. <laughs> Why mess with eight mouths in the armpits? Why? <laughs> so, Why? from theconversation.com, DNA tests concluded, quote, their most recent common ancestor lived during the Triassic or early Jurassic period oh when God. dinosaurs were just getting going. Oh my God. Scientists have also found small fossil bones that look similar to our new species in Jurassic, 180 million year old rocks from northern France, which is further evidence of their ancient origin. End quote. So, so these things are old. They're, in, they're some of the oldest things on the planet, yeah. Wow! Yeah. To put this into perspective, our most recent common relative can be traced back 200,000 years. So their most recent relative lived before the dinosaurs. I am... They're barely changed. Speechless. Yeah. It was as though they knew they were in paradise and decided, like, not to leave. Like, just like you said. That's so <laughs> smart. So, it, if you got it good, 
Keep it good. If it ain't broke, what's the phrase? Uh, keep those eight mouths. Keep those eight mouths. <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I guess the lesson is don't change or fucking completely change. I don't know. Nature's weird. Just do what makes you happy. <laughs> do what makes you happy. And maybe if we're lucky, we'll all evolve to have eight mouths. That yeah. seems like the way to live. <laughs> That's eight mouths in just one of the most beautiful places on earth. Yeah. So, the end. <laughs> uh, thank you for listening, subscribing. Please subscribe. Apple did this thing, this update thing. Oh. Everyone's libraries are wiped, so please remember to subscribe. Yes, And please. tell your friends. Remind them to subscribe again. Thank I know. You. Thank you, Apple. And thank you for sticking with us. Um, thank you for listening. We love you guys so much. And yeah. thank you for um, rating us. Yeah. We really, really love that. It's incredible. Uh, And please, stay interesting. Please do.